Hi there, welcome to another tutorial from me, Jid Webb. Uh, I've had quite a few requests to sh for, from people to look at my uh, current workflow. But, uh, currently, I start off in Lightroom and then go and do the finishing touches in Photoshop. So, here we go. Okay, first of all, we need to select an image, and as with all images, you need to check it before you start to do anything uh, at least at one to one uh, at full size to make sure that it's not blurred as if you start um, working on an image that uh, you find out is blurred halfway through can be very annoying so this image looks fine just put it into full screen in Lightroom shortcut key for that is hold the shift button down and tab and then shift and tab to get back to have all your palettes available so I'm happy with that uh, image to go so I'm going to press the develop button or D on the keyboard put it into develop mode and a few basic things I always do um, with uh, aviation images is essentially flatten them first. By flatten them I mean make them um, take a lot of the contrast out of the image. But be very careful how you do this, don't go over the top otherwise you'll start to get uh, halos appearing around your image. So I drop the uh, highlights down to about negative uh, 50 and increase the shadows by exactly the same amount. I will also look at the histogram uh, checking for any, <coughs> uh, if, if it was over here, be underexposed. If the histogram was over to the right, then it'd be overexposed. Uh, this image, for one of mine, for a change, seems quite uh, reasonably exposed. So I won't put any exposure compensation in at the moment, but if you do, you can drag the slider around, you can actually drag the histogram around but double click back on the on the exposure and it will set it back to zero. So we flatten the highlights, we've increased or we've brought up the shadows slightly. Now I'm going to set the white point. Uh, setting the white point, hold the Alt button down on your keyboard, click on the slider and then drag it to the right until you just about see some clipping appear. Those areas of white there are areas that are now blown out. So we need to go back slightly until that uh, clipping disappears. And there we go. Do the same with the blacks. Hold the Alt button down, drag the black, uh, slide it over to the left or right, depending. And just tend to leave a little bit of black um, there. Um, now then, for aviation, uh, I tend to just add about plus 10 of clarity, and I will drop the saturation ever so slightly, maybe just minus 5, leave clarity where it is. For contrast, I could use the contrast slider here, but I tend to use the tone curve, and I apply pretty much the same amount of contrast to all my images medium contrast. Select that and it applies a very gradual contrast curve to your image. Uh, further down, where I'm not going to touch um, the hue or saturation or luminance. No split toning, certainly not. Sharpening, now then this is an interesting one. Depending on your image, um, I will apply a base level of sharpening to an image in Lightroom. Won't put too much on because I know I'm going to resize this in Photoshop and that will affect the sharpening, the actual resizing process itself and then I'll apply a small amount of sharpening just to finish the image off. But as a rule of thumb, depending which lens I'm using, um, here I am using a 24 105 which I know is quite a sharp lens 
so I will only apply about uh, plus 60 uh, amount of sharpening and I don't uh, currently with the masking set to zero sharpening is applied to the whole of the image don't want that I only want it to be sharpened on the edges so holding the alt button down again grabbing the mask key when it's showing all white like that that means that it, the image is, or sharpening is being applied to the whole of the image so drag the slider over to the right and then when you see the white lines disappearing from the areas that you want to uh, be actually sharpened i.e. the edges of the aircraft leave the selection um, at uh, that so in that instance masking is at set at 75 noise reduction well, this again let's put the information back on shot at 100 ISO on uh, a Canon 50D so there is minimal noise there will be a little bit of noise I tend to add a little bit of, re of noise reduction um, to my images plus 30 of luminance <coughs> colour noise reduction about the same I'll leave all the others as is next we come to lens correction <coughs> I always enable profile uh, corrections and remove chromatic aberration. Chromatic, chromatic aberration is where you see a purple fringe appearing. You will normally see it in aviation photography around the nose. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in this case, <coughs> I can't really see any, but I leave it selected anyway. Um, if you're using a prime lens or uh, a Canon L lens or Nikon lenses uh, enable profile collection here under profile and you should see your lens automatic selected uh, if we uh, take that off you can just see the effect it takes away a little bit of the vignetting around the edge and it also takes any barrel distortion out of the image so that's done and that's set, that's me done for Photoshop uh, for sorry for Lightroom uh, we'll now move it into Photoshop so we'll right click on the image edit in Adobe Photoshop this will load the uh, image into uh, your version of Photoshop now there's very little to do um, to the image here in colour or levels term. All I really do in Photoshop is crop it and resize it. So to crop the image, let's just check and see how level the image actually is. So I'm zooming right into the tower here. <coughs> Go back a bit, put the grid on, which is um, control uh, apostrophe on the keyboard to shortcut. Drag the image around holding the space bar, <coughs> it actually looks level. Let's go back to full size, which is control zero take the grid off so control apostrophe again okay and we're now ready to crop the image so select C is the shortcut select the crop tool correct uh, select your aspect ratio for your crop <coughs> standard aviation photography is uh, 3x2 or 4x3 and some sites will now even allow you to have a 16x9 uh, crop. That will just go for standard 3x2, come out to 2x3, press the double arrows in the middle of the crop and that will flick the aspect ratio around for you. So, <coughs> let's crop the image, let's pull the sides in, 
bottom up, just leaving enough <coughs> at either side. Center the image using the center point of the crop. Oops. Using the arrow keys <coughs> to move the image, not move the crop. <laughs> it's just what happened there. So that looks pretty central now. Image is level. Runway sloping to the left, <coughs> but the tower straight. So when you're happy with your crop, either press enter or press the tick at the top. Now we're going to resize the image. So bring up the uh, <coughs> resizing uh, dialog box, which is Control, Alt, and I. Short uh, shortcut on the keyboard or uh, image image size. Um, I'm going to make this 1200 pixels wide. Leave the little link there that constrains the uh, the height size. Be quite careful on the resampling algorithm you choose here. A lot of people will pick bicubic sharper for reduction. Now I find this can over sharpen your image. I tend to use bicubic smooth. <coughs> Press OK. Press Z on the keyboard to get back to your magnifying glass. View the image at 100%. <coughs> and now you're going to do any final sharpening. Now there are so many ways to finally sharpen an image. <coughs> I'm just going to use a very simple one here. I'm going to make a duplicate of my background uh, of my uh, layer using Control J on the keyboard. Go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, and I'm going to use 100% sharpening, radius of uh, 04, and noise reduction at 10%. Everything else can stay the same. Press OK. Now we I can see the uh, the effect of it on the screen here. Probably be tricky to see it on YouTube, but there's uh, that image is now perfectly sharp for the uh, net. If you had any over sharpened areas, because you've done your sharpening on a background uh, on, a, on a separate layer, you can select the eraser tool around brush, uh, set the opacity to say 40% and then you can just brush away any any areas where you may have just slightly over sharpened produce some jaggies. So once you're happy with that go to uh, layer, flatten image. So the image is now flattened. All we need to do now is to save it. Um, the best way I find to save this for web usage is save for web. You have um, a few different <coughs> parameters you can change here. Always set the quality at 100%. It doesn't matter anymore the, uh, what you set these to, as they uh, were used in the old days to how to load the JPEG, um, progressive or optimized. It, um, you, the internet's that quick now. You don't see um, you don't see the images load anymore. So that's pretty much irrelevant. So well, as long as the quality is set at 100, press save find somewhere to save it uh, <coughs> what, uh, I tend to use a naming protocol of I'll leave the image uh, serial number at the end I will put the registration of the aircraft the airport it was taken at 
uh, my name, press save. Um, that image is now saved on my desktop and is ready to upload to the internet. So I'm not going to show you how to upload the uh, an image to the internet, but here is that image uh, currently sat on airliners. Um, while you're on the net, please feel free to follow me at, uh, on Facebook, Jidster at Facebook, or visit my Flickr page at Flickr uh, forward slash photos forward slash Jidster. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you'd like me to make any more, please uh, leave a note below. Please subscribe, like, all the usual stuff. Bye-bye.